Britain's women rowers are fighting to make history at this year's Olympics. Men's rowing has long been one of the UK's most successful Olympic sports, but the female rowers have never won gold. After years in their shadow, the women are pushing themselves to the limit to ensure that come Beijing, they'll finally take their place on top of the podium. 25-year-old Annie Vernon is fighting for one of four seats in the women's quad. If she makes it, she will be going to her first ever Olympics. She's finding the training tough. Sometimes you wake up and you like ache from every bone. When you're not physically on the water or lifting weights, your body just kind of shuts down. So the number of times like I've driven home here, like hitting myself around the head, keeping myself awake. All winter, the women have been racing against each other. The, the clearest thing that's come out of all this winter's testing is that all the scholars are basically the same speed. You know, you'll race someone over 20 minutes and you'll win by 0.1 of a second. If I miss one stroke, that could be it. That could drop me from first to sixth. At this level of competitive rowing, the tiniest flaw in technique can make the difference between winning and losing. Every single stroke must transfer maximum power to the oar as efficiently as possible, and the crew must gauge when to row flat out without risk of flagging before the finish. Elise Laverick is a veteran of the GB rowing squad. This will be her final Olympics, if selected for the double skull. This will be my third Olympic Games. The first was Sydney and we finished seventh. And then Athens, I came third. Athens at that point was a, a, the highlight of my career, but yet it was, it was a bronze medal. I don't have a gold medal. In Athens, the difference between gold and bronze was six seconds. Quite a margin in rowing USA. terms. Great Britain. With such a challenge ahead, for Elise to win, it will take more than China graft won. and technique. It will take self-belief. Switzerland, attention, don't go, power them feel, that's good. Pushing up on China 1, USA, holding level. Let's push it out to half a length with this second 10. Let's go now, Anna, harden up, that's good. Working on rhythm. But with so much at stake, self-belief is in short supply. I love this bit of the race, let's go. Drive to the line. She isn't coming. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Do you put milk in, Mum, with an omelette? Oh, she says no. <laughs> I will end up with a scrambled omelette, apparently. Oh, well. Tomorrow, the GB rowing squad will be travelling to Belgium for the final winter selection trials. Very good scrambled eggs. Mm. Omelette, but... <laughs> If Annie is going to make it to her first Olympics, she will have to beat her friends into the boat. I think to get to the top in sport, you've got to be a certain type of person, which means you've got to be really selfish and you've got to be, you know, not arrogant, but you've got to be able to, you know what you want and you know how to get it. We're here to win medals and Olympic gold medals. And, you know, that's the only thing that matters, really. But the single-minded focus needed to win gold has a physical price. Veteran Elise's dream of a third Olympic Games has hit a problem. You want to be the best that you can be, and that means that every day you push your body to, to the limit. I did sort of high rate bursts again today, and mm -hmm. it was just, just a little bit sore. But it goes... 11 years of lifting weights and rowing six hours a day, six days a week, has taken its toll. She has a stress fracture to her rib and inflamed muscles in her elbow. I can't row three weeks with no rowing at all, no upper body work, so I don't put any strain on it. Elise's injury has come at a critical stage of the selection process. The women's squad are in Harswinkel, Belgium, for selection trials. Annie, hoping to make her first Olympics, will have to compete in a series of races against her teammates. A good performance here would make her a lead contender for a place in the quad. Oh, it's very competitive, and that's what the Olympics is all about. The trials aren't just about picking the, uh, the best people, they're also about having the, the competition there to, to keep pushing the standard and seeing how people react under stress. Go. But after a good showing in the first few days, Annie's had a major setback. Illness has forced her to miss the final race and her best chance to impress the coaches. I think frustrated, annoyed, 
off. Um, pretty gutted. Yeah, going to plan A. If I'd done really well here, that would have been a real opportunity to, you know, mark my claim in the in the quad. Oh, that's good. Something to ponder on. With the coaches close to making their final decisions, Annie still has it all to prove. Elise's hopes for a final chance to win gold are hanging in the balance. So it, it, it does gathering it up, gathering it up, whoa, you know, let's go. After three weeks out of the boat, she has to prove that she can come back up to Olympic standard. Attention, shoulders back, shoulders down. Stay in the middle of the seat. Yeah, that's better, see? I've effectively put my life on hold for four years. I've turned up in the rain, in the snow, in the dark. I've done so many miles on the water, lifted so many weights. If at the end of the day I don't get to go to Beijing, then I'd almost feel that I'd wasted that time. Attention. Ta-da. A series of World Cups will determine exactly who makes it to Beijing. At the training camp in Varese, Olympic rookie Annie is being tested out in the bow seat of the quad. But that doesn't guarantee anything. As well as being physically absolutely wrecked and mentally really tired, you know, emotionally, there's just so much pressure on everyone. And you can really feel it in the team. It is quite tough because, you know, some people get the nod and some people get the shake of the head and, you know, it's literally people's dreams being shattered. Elise's dream of going out in a blaze of Olympic glory rests on her last World Cup race. The final push for a gold medal is the only thing between her and the end of her rowing career. I am quite worried about being indoors all day. It's going to be quite different. I wonder how long it will take for you not to look like a rower, for your hands to go to normal for your tan lines to go to normal and for your shoulders to go to normal. You're giving me a complex. <laughs> I'm forever destined to look stupid in a bikini on a beach. <laughs> Great Britain are without doubt being challenged on both sides. The Italians on their right in lane three, the Finnish in lane number five. But once on the water, Elise's dream of a third Olympic seems far from certain. Little look left there from Elise Laverick in the bow seat here. A little look right to the Italians. It's Elise Laverick makes the calls. She's going to have to make a big call here now because Great Britain are being pushed hard again by the Italians. She's going to hang on. Great Britain gets the gold up to the line. It's Great Britain from Italy. It looks as if Elise will make her third Olympic Games. Annie is racing in the bow seat in the quad. The slightest slip-up could cost her her place in a crew that looks set on winning gold. What you're seeing here now for Great Britain is an awesome winter's training. Look very, very impressive. It's one length, it's comfortable, it's Great Britain paddling to the line. At the moment, looking at this, they are definitely on song to become the first British women's crew ever to win an Olympic gold medal, and that would be fantastic. With convincing wins, Annie and Elise are selected for the Olympics in their chosen boats. Gold is one step closer and the chance to make history for women's rowing. Obviously, I've got a lot of good memories. I've had loads of great experiences, but that's not enough for athletes, it's not enough for rowers, because it's all about performing at the Olympic Games. When the flag drops, the stops, which I think is quite a good saying, because it actually everything that happens before you get to the start line means nothing. My whole career will be judged on what happens over six minutes. You've got one chance, and that's how their life will be, will be judged. 